Do you want to create a sports betting model but have no idea where to start or what to do? Well, this video is going to be for you. Welcome to Sports Betting Truth, where it is my goal to give you actual sports betting advice without the touting, shilling, hype, or false promises. Now, the idea of this video today is pretty simple. This video is going to present the easiest, absolute, most simple model possible to make in Excel for sports betting. The absolute simplest model you can make. The idea of this video is to give you a general idea of what exactly sports betting modeling is using the most basic concepts out there. Just so you have an idea of what is possible with sports betting modeling and where exactly you would begin. I think a lot of people are overwhelmed just by the word model. They hear that word and they run for the hills. The point of this video is to show exactly what it is, but at the simplest level, at the most basic level. But keep in mind, this video is at a very basic level. It is literally a 101 level video. If you have any experience at all with this, you're probably gonna look at this video and be like, uh, that's, that's basic, because that's the point. The point is to introduce the concept of sports modeling to people who have no experience with it at all. Now, this is gonna be a macro-free model. Everything in this model is going to be done with basic Excel functions, and I'm going to point this out from the get-go. This model is not going to win you money. So don't watch this video expecting to use this model to profit. It's too basic of a model, it's too easy and too simple of a model for it to make you money. Now I will say this model would probably be better than doing absolutely nothing at all, but it still wouldn't win you money in the long run. But like I said, that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is to highlight the absolute basic, most core level principles of sports betting modeling. So with that being understood, let's get underway. So here's my Excel file titled Simple NFL Model. I'm using the NFL here just because it has the least number of games in a season and I feel like that would be the easiest to do because it's just that have a lot of games compared to like baseball. I have last year's NFL schedule here on this tab titled Schedule. I have the away team, the away score, the home team, and the home score. That's all I have right now. So what I did is I went to profootballreference.com. It has a lot of good resources for all sports, not just football. And so what I did is I decided for this model to use one stat because that is the absolute simplest way you can do a model is using one stat. So I figured a good all around stat that we could use would be the stat right here called SRS. It stands for Simple Rating System. It's basically a very simple way to assign a power rating to every NFL team. And Sports Reference does this for all sports, not just football. So what I did is I took every team's SRS rating and I put it in this tab right here next to their name. So this is every team's SRS, like the Patriots, a 5.2 SRS, the Dolphins, minus 8.8. Obviously, the higher the SRS, the better. And so I go back to my schedule tab and I have this column right here, margin. And then I have this column right here, ASRS, and this column right here, HSRS. So away SRS, home SRS. So what I'm going to do here for margin is pretty simple. Just a simple Excel equation. Away score minus home score. B2 minus D2 minus 6 for that game. And then I'm just going to fill it all the way down. Double click right there. And all the margins are calculated. For ASRS, what I'm going to do is a VLOOKUP. So equals VLOOKUP. B2, or A2, my bad. A2, comma, table array. So I go over to SRS tab and I highlight this table. Make sure you put the dollar signs in front of the letters and numbers here on the A1 to B32. So it, uh, when you fill, it doesn't change the letters and numbers. And then column index number, so how many columns over it is, two. So the second column's two, and then false. And that will fill in the Atlanta Falcons SRS. And then I just fill that all the way down, and now every team's SRS, every away team's SRS is now populated. So now I'm going to do the same thing for home SRS. You can just copy and paste this if you want to and just change B2 to uh, C2. And now it has the home team's SRS in there. And now you fill that in. So now we got this filled out. So we have the margin, which is going to be our dependent variable. The dependent variable here is what we're trying to measure according to our stats. So in this case, that's the final score margin of the game because we're trying to see how the final score margin is influenced by these stats right here. These stats right here are what are called our independent variables, aka they're not going to be influenced by anything. They're independent, but we're hoping that the margin is influenced. So now that we have this all filled out all the way for every game, what we're going to do now is calculate our equation. So this model is going to be based on basic linear regression principles. 
So what you want to do is go to the data tab, but most people aren't going to have the add-in installed. I don't on this new laptop, so what I'm going to do is add it myself and show you how to do it. So you go down to File Options, Add-ins, and you're looking for Analysis Tool Pack. You want to click on that and click Go, and then click Analysis Tool Pack and Analysis Tool Pack VBA, and then hit OK. And now we have this tab right here, Data Analysis. So you click on Data Analysis, and then you want to scroll down to Regression. So you click on Regression, and then you have this right here. So our input Ys is going to be our margin, our Y value, our dependent variable. So just click that, Control Shift down, whoops, Control Shift down, and there's that. And then click on the X range box, scroll back up, and select our D or select our independent variables, our X values, Control Shift down. So we have that filled in. So you want to click on labels just so you know what the values are. Um, you want to have new worksheet. You want to have residuals and line fit plots. And then click OK. And now it calculated our regression. A lot to unpack here, but trust me, it's not that complicated. So we have our line fit plots first of all. What we're looking for right here is this line fit plot right here because this is what we're going to use. So basically it plotted all of the margins and the predicted margins based on this simple model, which is the orange line. So basically what this number right here, R square, this is an important number. So the R square here is basically how many of our dependent variables, the margin, were predicted by the independent variables, the SRS. In this case, about 31.7% of the margins could be explained by the SRS, which 31% is average. Basically the higher the R square is, the more predictive your model is going to be. So you want to shoot for a high number here, but it's not the end of the world if it's low. I'll just say that. Besides, we're only using one stat here, so obviously it's not going to predict everything. So 31.7% for one stat is actually pretty good. So that's the most important stat up here under regression statistics. What you're looking for right here for regression F, you want to make sure this number is low, which it is. As long as it's under 0.05, you're good. And then there's some important numbers down here. The intercept is a very important one right here. The intercept is basically where the line starts. In this case, minus 2.24. But also in sports gambling modeling, the intercept is almost always the home advantage. In this case, the away team had a minus 2.24 point disadvantage for every game according to this model, which is pretty accurate. It's pretty accurate with what we know about home advantage constants. The simplest way to explain coefficient is that for every change in our independent variables, how did the dependent variable change? So basically for every 0.98 unit increase in the away SRS, the margin changed. That's the simplest way to put it. It's basically the slope of the line. It's basically the angle of this slope right here. And then the other important value here is our p-value. Basically, just like significant F, if it's under 0.05, you're probably good. The lower, the better here, but especially under 0.05. When you're using a lot of different variables instead of just one, there's going to be a lot of numbers here. But the lower numbers are going to be the ones that are more predictive. So that's basically what we're looking for here. So in this case, this is one giant equation. You want to copy and paste these three things and bring them back over to our schedule tab. Just put them right here. It doesn't matter where you put them. So the intercept is the home advantage. So this is actually all one giant equation, right? So let's pick a random matchup. Let's go with the Cowboys and the Lions, okay? So the Cowboys SRS this past season was 1.1. So we're gonna put that right here. The Lions SRS this past season was minus three. We're gonna put that right here. And let's pretend that the Cowboys are playing at the Lions. So our equation is basically going to be very simple. It's going to be the intercept plus the ASRS times the Cowboys SRS and the HSRS times the Lions SRS. So I'm gonna put this equation right here. Equals intercept P10 plus parentheses Cowboys SRS 1.1 or P14 times the ASRS coefficient, in this case right here, 0 0.98097, close parentheses, plus the Lions SRS, in this case minus 3, times the HSRS coefficient, in this case minus, point, minus 1.022713, 
close parentheses, that's our equation, right? So what this number represents, 1.9067279, that number represents the predicted margin of this matchup. And since we're basing everything off away teams, basically the Cowboys would be favored by 1.9067279 points in this hypothetical matchup. So let's say the odds boards are showing the Cowboys at minus three. But your model right here says that the Cowboys should only be favored by 1.906729. So basically, according to your model, the Lions have an edge of 1.1 points. There is 1.1 point of value on the Lions at plus 3. So according to your model, if you're going to bet according to your model, you would bet the Lions because of that edge, assuming your model is right. That is basically the simplest way to do a model, right there. Now, like I said, that model's not going to win you money. It's too simple, but you get the idea. That is what is known as a linear regression model. There's other ways to model, but this is the simplest example I could give. Now, what if you wanted to add more stats than just SRS? Well, I had that prepared. Right here on the stats tab, I got these columns ready to go. I picked four random stats to go along with SRS. Just I just randomly picked four stats. I picked offensive yards per play, offensive penalty yards, turnovers forced, and defensive rushing yards per play allowed. Random stats. So what we're gonna do right here is run the same concept that we did right here and fill these stats in. We're gonna fill these stats in just like we did right here. So let me do that. Like I said, VLOOKUP. Over to the stats tab. Three, false. Whoops. Oh, I did VLOOKIT, that's why. VLOOKUP. All right. And this right here is the away offensive yards per play for the Falcons. We're going to fill that all the way down. And then we're going to do the same thing across the board. I'm not going to show that to you. All right, so we got all these stats filled in. So what we're going to do now is the same thing we did with the simple model. We're going to regress based on these five statistics. So go to data, data analysis, regression. Our Y range is going to stay the same. We're still trying to measure the margin for a dependent variable. And our independent variables are going to be all of these. Here we go. Let's see if this is going to be any good. And all right, our R square barely improved. So it looks like the stats I picked probably weren't that predictive compared to everything else. But again, they're basic stats. They're not advanced stats. And they're unadjusted stats. That's another debate for another time. So what we're going to look for here is our p-values. So basically, this value is very low, so that one looks good. This value is low, so that looks good. But all the rest of them are over 0.05. So basically, none of these variables I picked are predictive compared to these two. So that explains why the R-squared didn't really change that much. But the equation is the same. You would do the same exact thing like you did for the simple model. It's the same exact concept. Nothing changes, only you have to add more coefficient calculations. So if we did a hypothetical matchup of the Dolphins and the Browns, basically we would take every team's statistics. So the Dolphins right here, they're right here. And then their SRS was minus 8.8. .8. And then the Browns, here they are. And then the Browns are right over here. Here's their stats. And their SRS was minus 0.3. So you do the same thing. The intercept in this case is not going to match the home advantage because 11.94 obviously doesn't make any sense. It doesn't always match the home advantage, but if your model is on point, it usually will. So it's going to be intercept, in this case R6, plus the Dolphins SRS times the SRS coefficient right here plus the Dolphins yards per play times the coefficient which is right here plus the Dolphins penalty yards 
times the penalty yard coefficient plus the Dolphins turnovers force times the turnovers force coefficient plus the Dolphins defensive rush yards per play allowed times that coefficient right here. And then you do the same thing for the Browns, the rushing yards per play allowed times that coefficient. And there we go. There's our equation. So according to this, the Browns at home against the Dolphins should be favored by 12.84, which is a very high spread. You rarely see spreads that high in the NFL. So that also should introduce some skepticism about this approach on this quick model I threw together. But hey, it could be right. You never know. If your model spits out a line like that, maybe it's right. That's why you test these things over time and do a bunch of trials and testing in the long run to see if it's actually a worthwhile model or not. That might be a good number. It might not be. You don't know until you test it out over time, a bunch of trials to see if it's worthwhile or not. That's what you're trying to do. There's only one way to find out if a model is any good or not, and that's to test it. There's a bunch of different ways you can test a model. That's another video for another time, but that's how you would gauge whether this number is any good or not. But anyway, that is the absolute simplest way to approach a sports betting model. Again, these models will not win you money, but I hope it helped illustrate the concepts of models, and I hope at least now you have a direction on where to go going forward. Again, this is the very ground level. It can get so much more complex and advanced than this, but it's up to you to see how much you ultimately want to advance yourself, but at least now you have the roots, the foundation to build upon when it comes to modeling. This is only one type of model. Again, this is a linear regression style model. It's not the only way to do it. There are other modeling methods out there. You have power ranking models, you have Monte Carlo models, but this is a linear regression model, probably the simplest way to do it. I hope you found this video educational and helpful. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. I will be bringing more videos like this to you to help educate you and teach you about sports gambling and approaches you can take for long-term sports gambling profitability. Until next time, this is Sports Betting Truth signing off.